Good morning, ESM. Today is June 9th, and today we are going to continue to talk a bit about Pride Month, as well as some new things that are happening here at ESM. For starters, Casey mentioned yesterday, yesterday that the important events of the Stonewall Riots. That brings us to our first trivia question today. So our first question is, what were the Stonewall Riots? Were they A, riots that occurred in 1969 against Stonewall Jackson, B, riots that occurred in New York City when police raided the Stonewall Inn, a famous gay bar, or C, a sit-in protest at the Stonewall Inn where gay patrons were refused service. Before we get our answer, let's go to our top stories with Abby. Here are our top news stories for today. On Tuesday, Senator Joe Manchin had an hour-long virtual meeting with black civil rights leaders about voting rights and Senate rules just after he reiterated his opposition to a proposal to federalize voting rights. Manchin called the meeting with half a dozen civil rights organizations a constructive conversation, but appeared unmoved by their appeals to reconsider his opposition. Police have identified the man who died in a boating accident on the Rockette River in St. Lawrence County. The man killed was Michael A. Bragg of Norfolk. Police said that he died of asphyxiation from warm water drowning. His body will be taken to Canton Potsdam Hospital for an autopsy. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The answer to our first question is B. Riots that occurred in New York City when police raided the Stonewall Inn, a famous gay bar. A year later, there, there was the first pride parade to commemorate that event. It was then that the slogan, say it loud, gay is proud, was born, which is where we get the idea of pride from. A reminder that all Spartan Academy students in grades 10 and 11 who are taking an OCC class this summer must attend an ori orientation session in the auditorium on either Thursday, June 10th, which is tomorrow, or Friday, June 11th. The sessions will be at 9 a.m. on both days. You must attend one of these sessions. Make sure to arrange with your teachers in advance. Now we have Mr. Ward and Mr. Brandon who will talk about our ESM Pride celebration from yesterday. I think it's important that uh, we recognize all the different student populations in this building and how we can celebrate each other. And it's Pride Month for the LGBTQIA plus community. And I think that it's important that we make students that are a part of that group feel um, seen and welcomed and that they are loved and recognized. I got involved because two students came to me and said, we want to make a difference. And I said, how? And then they came back a week later, and this was one of the four or five things that they selected. And uh, then Mr. Brandon actually says to me, uh, man, you wouldn't know that it's uh, uh, LGBTQIA plus month, given the fact that there's nothing going on anywhere in the building. And I was like, yeah. What a bunch of jerks. No one's doing anything. And then I walked back into my own classroom and realized I hadn't done anything. So rather than look outward to blame, I looked inward and um, with a little bit of help built something on my door. And five days later, we were able to throw a very impromptu, but I think very successful pride celebration. And it was just a pleasure to be a part of it. And I'm so thankful for the people in my life who pushed me to be more than I am or better than I would be on my own. Today's events were supported by uh, PRISM, which is, uh, has truckloads of great students involved, and Mr. Russo is their supervisor. And uh, this group is actually not PRISM, although we are allies and supportive of PRISM. And we ran the idea past the PRISM Club, and uh, Mr. Russo and his team really loved and supported it, and many of their students turned out today to help support us. And it, it, again, it just became deeply collaborative and deeply inspiring to see all different kinds of people come and support each other um, from official clubs, from unofficial clubs, and I think just people in the community and, and allies of the community. If we can walk into the building with that type of celebration every single day, uh, what a way to start our school day. You know, we, I, it was positive, there was music, there was fun, and I also think that uh, at the same time we were recognizing um, the LGBTQIA plus community and saying, you know, we're here, and welcome, have fun with us, put on a sticker, and love is love. It was awesome. 
I, I can't tell you how many people stopped in the hall and just said, oh, what a great way to start the day. I had one, one staff member say, like, it just made me love being in the building again. And I, I felt like I haven't heard a, a lot of that this year because COVID's taken so much from us. And I feel like, I don't know, we got to wrestle a little piece back and, and make this building about love. And that's felt absent for a long time. And it was great to play a part. Our second trivia question is, why is the rainbow flag a symbol of LGBTQ pride? A, it isn't, that's a pink triangle. B, it displays variety of colors to represent a variety of people. Or C, rainbows are a symbol of hope. Before you tell you the answer, let's first see what the weather is like today. Why is the rainbow flag a symbol of LGBTQ pride? Because C, rainbows are a symbol of hope. The original flag included pink and turquoise, but they were later removed. Two students whose jobs were instrumental in making yesterday's pride celebration happen are Riley Murphy and Bella Sylvester. However, there are more activities that will be happening as well. We've always been the people that step up and help people because that's just the way we are as human beings. And we've always talked about making a change in people's lives, whether it be local. We, we have big dreams. That's, I'm not going to get you wrong there. But um, yeah, we thought, I mean, we can start locally and we plan to go bigger. But just starting here and the plans that we have are already bigger than I could ever imagine. I think a lot of it had to do with our curriculum this year, learning about specifically just like different people who matter and a lot of that and then that just kind of spiraled into like how can we help other people too and we just kind of wanted to start small and then work our way up from there. Um, you know Mr. Mr. Brandon brought up a really good point he said that if you were to walk around the halls here before today then you wouldn't have known it was Pride Month and we just thought it was important that we support students in our school who are part of that group especially during this time. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And I have family members that are part of the community, and I just thought it was important for me to step up to the plate and make the change for the next generation. We started with a list of, I think, four issues that we were talking about, race, mental health, LGBTQIA+, and gender equity, and it's grown since then. So I think that we just want to cover all the areas that we can while we're still here and then have it keep going when we're gone. This all started when Mr. Ward gave a speech to our class that really hit us hard and we were just like, let's start, like, there's, why wait? And for those people, I just want them to know that there's support, there's allies, and we are here for you, even if you don't see us or hear us. We are here, and I hope you notice. And for the people who want to help make change but aren't sure if they can, then just show up, just as a first step. Just come and speak or listen if you want to just to, have these com to make these conversations be heard so we can help address these issues and fix them. For our next question, what prompted Harvey Milk and other gay rights local activists to start encouraging gay men and women to come out? A, the AIDS crisis, B, the Briggs Initiative, or C, his run for city supervisor? softball team lost in the quarterfinals to Whitesboro 10-7. They end their season with a record of 9-7. The girls lacrosse team also lost in their quarterfinal round against Central Square 11-10. They end their season with a record of 4-8. The New York Yankees had a great win against the Minnesota Twins last night 8-4. For the NBA, the 76ers beat the Hawks in Game 2 118-102. What prompted Harvey Milk and other gay rights local activists to start encouraging gay men and women to come out? The Briggs Initiative. The Briggs Initiative, or California Proposition 6, in 1978 would have banned gays and lesbians from working in California's public schools. Milk hoped the campaign would show voters they already knew and cared for gay people. The proposition was defeated. 
We hope that our show today has helped you learn a little more about the history of Pride Month and LGBTQIA history. Likewise, if you are interested in getting involved in making a difference at our school, it is not too late. For a final trivia question, please check out our Twitter poll at ESM Morning Show. Question is, which U.S. university opened the first office for LGBT students? Was it A, Yale University, was it B, the University of Michigan, or was it C, New York University? For now, from Olivia, me, and everyone else here at The Morning Show, have a great day.